So I was uh, painting some minis. That's why I have these uh, gloves on. I was just uh, priming them. So while I was waiting for them to dry, I, I've always wanted to make this video or make a video about this game called Galdor's Grip. So while I'm waiting for them to dry, let's go ahead and play Galdor's Grip. This is a great game um, created by Greg Jewell. If you just Google Galdor's Grip, Greg Jewell, it should bring you to his itch.io page um, as of the time of this recording. And it's a pay what you want type of thing. And this is a print and play game, so you could get the files for free off Board Game Geek. But uh, what I, I totally recommend just throw him some money. You know, it's it's pay whatever you want. So I threw him a couple of bucks. And yes, you do have to craft the cards yourself. Now this tuck box, uh, you can find this on Board Game Geek under Galdor's Grip. Now, um, before we start, here's the story behind this game. So this is Galdor. Uh, and by the way, Greg Jewell has a has a, uh, a video. I think it's on Vimeo. He explains it much better than I do. But bottom line is this wizard Galdor. We're going to be exploring his mind, okay? And he had an ancient. He had a battle with an ancient evil, I think, called the Frenzied Flame or something. And there was this evil telepath named uh, Faragot. And Faragot put these uh, figments of himself into his mind. So what? we need to do in order to win the game is we need to imprison these uh, for in a prison uh, for eternity and that's the goal of the game and you do that by uh, where is it by unlocking four of these things called binding stones so you need four binding stones plus you're going to need nine power to activate these binding stones and that's represented by stars and then you activate where is it here it is galdor's grip and once this card is activated and you have nine stars you win the game so let's go ahead and play the game and at the end we'll talk about all uh, the expansions for it which comes with the original pdf files for this game right now i'm playing with the core set and you could tell it's the core set because at the bottom uh, it says core set. So this is the core. This is what you should start with. All right. So let's give it another shuffle. All right. So let's go ahead and start playing. So the, the idea is we're going to take the card. We're just going to flip it. And what, what you do is you just take cards and put it to the back. Put it to the back. All right. So let's go ahead and, and play and see how it works. So let's our first card is Farragut's Fortress. So all you have to pay attention to is everything on the right hand side okay so or sorry the left hand side so right now we have a value of one this card could be rotated because of this little uh, turn icon uh, it could be a six or a one so what does that mean well uh, it means when you you're gonna take this card and you're gonna put it to the back now if it's a one, if it's a six, you're going to take six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you could take this card and you could put it anywhere you want in the stack of cards that are moving to the back, right? You could put it right at the back. I could slip it somewhere here, anywhere I want, but you cannot rearrange the cards that are moving to the back. All right. But right now we have activated this card. We're going to keep it as a one because I want to explore the deck. Now, this is what this card does. Peek at a face down card. Remember, this is Farragut, the evil uh, telepath's fortress. And it says, peek at a face down card in the deck. If there are none, you lose the game. Luckily, we just started, so we have a lot of face down cards. So let's go ahead and peek at, well, let's say the next one. Ooh, I don't think I want to activate that yet. So this is a figment of Farragut. Another card that could cause you to lose the game. Now you do want to activate those, but just not yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to as, as a six. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And um, again, I could put this anywhere I want. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to leave it where it is. Bring it to the back. Let's see what we get next. Ooh, we have found a binding stone. Now remember, we need four of these to uh, win the game. 
So over here on the text box, this is an end of the game ability that activates at the end of the game. And you can tell because there's a little star with a flag. So uh, for example, if this card at the end of the game has the same value, in this case it's a three right now, as the card adjacent to it, we gain a star or a power. We need nine of those to win. So as you're playing, this is the genius part of the game, is you want to look at these values and you want to make sure they're you know they're working there's there's some sort of uh, uh, synergy you know so you got to keep keep your eye on these values so right now I could do a four or a three so one two three I'm just gonna keep it as a three and I'm gonna take this and put it to the back all right so up next what do we have Balagren's beard it's a value of three and has a down arrow and it says moving to the bottom of the deck. If the sum of all the cards moving to the bottom of the deck is 13 or higher, rotate this card. So one, two, three. So obviously we have no values here. Uh, so it's just three. So if it's 13 or higher, we rotate the card. And if you rotate it, you're gonna get a power and you get this star. What does the star mean? It, it's a wild. So a star, it, the value of a star is anywhere between one and six. All right. But we can't rotate it. So now if I look back here, I have this binding stone and binding stones. If the card adjacent to it is the same value, it act, it gives you a star. So what I'm going to do, one, two, three. So I'm going to arrange this so that this card is beside the binding stone. See, so now I got at least one star if the order of the deck stays this way. So what do we got next? Ooh, we have found a figment of Farragut. So figment of Farragut, uh, there's a little eyeball with a star here and it says, while this card is on top of the deck, if this card was face up prior to this turn, which it wasn't, rotate it. And this will give us a star, but again, there's a little skull icon indicating up, up here with these black and white icons. That lets you know very quickly that this is a game, this is a card that could end and lose the game for you. So right now it's a value of two, so one, two. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it in that order. Let's see what this guy is. Oh, it's another Binding Stone. So it's a value of two, same sort of thing. At the end of the game, if this card has the same uh, value as an adjacent card, we get a star. So I wanna explore the deck. I could make it a five. But I just want to explore the deck as much as I can. So I'm going to keep it at two, one, two. I'm going to put this one in the back. Uh, let's see where we're at here. All right, I got a two back there. Let's see. Ooh, another figment of Farragut. So once again, if this card was face up prior to this turn, rotate it. It's the first time I'm seeing it. So the second time you see it, you're going to rotate it. Right? So it's only a one. So it goes back to the uh, back there. Okay, here's Galdor's grip. And here is like an alert when uh, it says when all, and it's a wild card for now. Um, when all four binding stones are face up in the deck, rotate this card, which will trigger, start the process of ending the game. So right now it's a star. So I'm just going to, I could pick anywhere between one and six. So I'm going to go one, I'm just going to do two. Let's see what we got here. Oh, another figment. Once again, next time we see it, we have to rotate this card. So one, two, three, four, five. And what do I want to do here? I would, yeah, I'm just going to keep it like that. What do we got? Okay, the Frenzied Flame. Uh, I didn't understand how this card originally worked, but now I get it. So it is a wild, but it says, while this is on top of the deck, rotate this card, then move it to a random spot in the deck and then end this turn. So we're gonna rotate it, which gives us a star right now, it gives us a power. And just somewhere in the deck, just slide it in. It's nice using these uh, sleeved cards, by the way. Just makes the sliding um, easier. So next is, oh, another binding stone. Now this one is a value one or six. Now here's the other thing I haven't mentioned yet. So when you're playing, you could use, so right now in this case, I have three values I could choose from. I could choose a six, I could choose a one, 
And you could also now, with the values are beginning to show behind the active card, which is this one, I could also use a three, right? So those are my options. So let's say if I do one, it's just gonna bring us to this binding stone. If I do one, two, three, four, five, six, brings us to that card. And if I do three, one, two, three, it brings us here. So I wanna keep these two cards the same uh, because if we can keep them the same, um, we get a star because that's what binding stones do, right? All binding stones have the same ability. So um, I'm just gonna keep it as, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the three. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. I could put this anywhere I want. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is just keep it in that order. And now, okay, the Veiled Stair. So at the end of the game, again, there's a little flag here. If the deck contains three or more adjacent cards in ascending or descending sequential order, you gain a star. So basically, if we have three cards that are like two, uh, you know, one, two, three, or four five six or six five four that will give us a, a power which was what we need but right now uh we could make it a two or a five so let's see what happens if i use a two one two that brings us to this uh i do want to rotate these cards because they have a start but it's a little bit too early so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna go five so i'm gonna rotate this card use the five value and do i want to do anything special here uh, I got a one, three, three. No, I think what I'm gonna do is put this guy here. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, let's do that. Brings us to this binding stone. Now I, my options are a one, a two, or a th or a five. So if I do a one, I don't want that because it's gonna activate that guy. It's a bit too early. So one, two brings us here, and this is now. Uh, basically rotate this card and put it at a random spot in the deck so I'm just gonna now it's a wild right so that might give us points at the end remember that uh, that card we just played the veiled I think it's called the veiled stare where if there's cards in sequential or non sequential order so that's where that this could come in handy right here right so I can make this a one two and whatever that is or I can make this a four or five and hopefully this is a six but anyway we'll see so anyway uh, here we are at Galdor's grip which is a wild so I'm gonna go one two three all right and do I want to change anything here nope all right so let's see what this card is oh it's the binding stone all right i think that we have all four binding stones found now right we got one two three and four yes we have all four binding stones so we're sort of approaching the end of the game so it's a four or a three so if i go one two three four brings us to this binding stone but i'm going to go ahead and rotate this to a three so it's one two three so we get to explore the deck a bit more. Now the back card here is a five. So I'm just gonna put this at the back here like that. Let's go ahead and, oh, it's a figment. So it's one, two, three, uh, or a one. Um, let's try, let's use the one. I'm just gonna use the one value right now. So this guy's just gonna go to the back. And then if I use the one here, um, that will bring us here. So there's one, two, three. Um, I don't know. You know what? I think one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, that's going to bring us there. All right, let's just do the one. And this one could be a three or four. So one, two, three, four brings us here. Uh, or one, two, three brings us to the veiled stare once again the veiled stare at the end of the game if this deck contains three or more adjacent cards by ascending or descending order you gain a star two three four five okay How about one two no i don't want that you know what i'm going to use this wild right here one two three all right so let's do that 
go ahead and flip all right maleficent may so moving to the bottom of the deck so this is activates when we're moving these cards to the bottom of the deck you may rearrange the order of all the cards moving to the bottom of the deck so one two three four five all right what do we want to do here i think what i want to do here is one two um no, I'm just going to do this for now. All right. And here we are at Farragut's Fortress, which we got to be careful with. Uh, peek at a face down card. Uh, if there are none in the deck, you lose the game. So luckily, we do have a few more. So let's say we want to use one, two, three, four, five, six, which would bring us here. Or we could use five, one, two, three, four, five, which would bring us here. So I'm going to go ahead and use, I guess, the six. One, two, three, four, five, six, which brings us to this binding stone. And one will bring us to this, or one, two, three, four, five, six will bring us here. Or I could use a three. One, two, three, which will, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to keep these together. And we have found the Vault of Avarice on top of the deck. If the sum of the next two cards in the deck are, is a seven, rotate this card, which will give us a power and make it a wild. So it's a seven. Look at that. It's a wild. So we can make it a seven. So we rotate this card. And it's one, two. Uh, oh, actually, it's a wild. So I could do whatever I want. So I'm going to go one, two, three. And um, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it here. That brings us to a brand new card, which is a figment of Farragut. Uh, once again, if this card is face up part of this turn, rotate it. First time we're seeing it. One, two, three, four. Oh no, and it brings us to Galdor's Grip. All right, so we're pretty much at the end of the game. We pretty much have almost all the cards face up. So uh, when all four binding stones are face up in this deck, rotate this card. So we do have, where is it? One, two, three, and the fourth one there it is so now we rotate this card so this card now becomes a value of one so the next time we see this card if this side was active prior to this turn end the game you need at least nine power to win else you lose so now we got to make sure that all these end game conditions are going to start benefiting us so this is a one so that goes back here Farragut's Fortress, if we don't have, we get to peek at a face down card. If there are none, we lose the game. Luckily, we have one here. And, oh, Beast Sanctum. That's a good card. I wouldn't mind getting that one. So, but right now, I can use a five or a six. So one, two, three, four, five, six would bring us to this Binding Stone. Five would bring us to this. So we're going to use six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we're just going to keep it in the same order. Uh, I could use a one or a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to use a six. I'm going to activate this. One, two, three, four, five, six. I want to start uh, recouping all these uh, powers that I can. So uh, if this card was pro was face up prior to this turn, which it was, rotate rotate the card. So now it's still a two, but now I get a power. So I, now I go one, two. So that goes to the back. Um, you may rearrange the cards moving to the back. So my choices here is a five or a two, or a five or a two. So two, three, four, five. Brings me to this. I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I'm going to keep the... Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. All right, I'm not really thinking this through because I'm filming. So normally I would take my time with it. So this is the second time we're seeing a figment of Farragut. So that's right, we have to rotate it. One, two, three, four, five. Which brings us to this binding stone, which is a six. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, we'll lose the game if we see this. So we don't want that. So... Um, 
I'm going to use three, I guess. One, two, three. Yep. This is the Veiled Stair, which is an end of the game ability. One, two, three, four, five. All right. This card allows me to rearrange all the cards here. One, two, three, four, five. So, oh boy, I don't want that one. So, I could use a two. One, two. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Second time we're seeing this figment. So, we get a star. And guess what, folks? We have found Galdor's grip. So, we have now officially ended the game. If this side was active prior to this turn, which it was, end the game. You need nine power to win or else you lose. So let's see uh, what we got here. So now we're, what we got to do is go through the deck and let's count. First, let's count our stars here. All right. So we got one, two, three, four. So we got four stars. We need five more. All right. So now let's uh, let's look at the binding stones. For example, so binding stones at the end of the game, uh, if this card has the same value, which is the three here, as an adjacent card, we gain a power. So remember, we need five more to get to nine. So if we put this together, so this was unfortunately these two were still face down, but look at that. This has the same value as that, so that gives us a star. So now we need four stars. So let's look at the other binding stone. This is a six, and unfortunately, there's no sixes beside it. That's unfortunate. And let's find the other binding stone right here. It's a two, so there's no twos beside it. And I think we missed a binding stone. Uh, three and three, we have that one. Six. Uh, oh, three. Right? Yeah, three and three, so we need f uh, four more. And this binding stone, three and three, right? Oops, I should bring it down. Three and three. So that's, now we need three stars. And this binding stone here, unfortunately, doesn't have it. So we need three more stars. So let's look at the bottom here for any end of the game um, conditions. So this is a binding stone. We did already did that one. Uh, binding stone, binding stone. So here is the veiled stair. If the deck contains three or more uh, adjacent cards in ascending or descending sequential order, gain a star. So let's see if we have any. So I think we need, I, we mentioned we need three, right? So we got one, we got, so if this was a four, that would have gave us one, but it's not. So what do we got here? Three, three, six, three, 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 five. All right, we got two wilds here. So this is gonna give us one. So we can make this a four, sorry, a three, four, five, because these are wilds, we're allowed to use those. And uh, so that's, now we need two. We need two more stars here to end this game. Uh, two, four, five, one, two. Oh, unfortunately, we don't have any of those. And you know what? I think that is all the cards that have an end of the game condition. So we have lost, we were two stars away. And let's take a look at what these two cards would have done for us. So this is Beast Sanctum. At, this is an end of the game condition. Uh, if, the, if the deck contains exactly three sixes, uh, you, we would gain two power. That would have won the game for us if it uh, has three sixes. Not four sixes, not two sixes, it has to be three sixes, and uh, it cannot be a wild. So, Be Sanctum does not consider uh, wilds, like what you see here. These cannot be used as sixes. They literally have to be uh, six. And the other card we missed, oh, another uh, card that could have helped us, so, kind of. Um, it's a three or a four, and... Moving to the bottom of the deck, you may uh, rotate any card moving to the bottom of the deck that has a little uh, uh, little arrow, right? So one, two, three. So for example, this one, as it's moving, I could have switched this to a four, right? As it's moving. So anyway, that's it. That's Galdor's Grip. So this is the core set. Now, the only quick thing I want to mention is 
when you see these, this, these little puzzle pieces on, on the cards, these are the critical cards you have to use. But if they don't have a puzzle piece, you could remove them from the game and there are three expansions, right? And what you can do is just take the six uh, non-critical cards from the core set and replace them with these, or you could mix them all up and, um, and just take six, you know, shuffle them all together and just randomly pull six and replace it with your core set, right? You remove the six unnecessary, not, I'm not going to call them unnecessary, but the non-critical cards. So you keep all the cards with the puzzle piece. And yeah, yeah, I mean, there's so much flavor, so much variety, so much replayability. So anyway, fantastic game. I highly recommend uh, you go ahead and craft Galdor's Grip. Uh, fantastic game. So that's it for this video. I think my, my uh, minis are, the primer is dry. Yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.